In 2018, we embarked on the journey of a lifetime, living and traveling full-time in our self-converted van. We're going to go for it. Join us as we continue to explore the beauty around us, one adventure at a time. Welcome to Big Sky Country. I think it is impossible to drive through the state of Texas without seeing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of windmills. It's kind of a rite of passage when you're heading west. Windmills, oil rigs, and trains. Today we are in northwestern Texas and this is Lake Meredith. So there's something really unique about this free campground here and we consider it a luxury. So please make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video and we'll tell you all the details that you need to know. But if you're a nomad or just someone cruising through the state and you're looking for some place to stay, I think you're going to want to add this location to your list. So we are passing through going west. We're only gonna be staying a few days here. Uh, we'll show you as much of this area as we can, but we are beelining it. We can't wait to get back into the mountains, into some forest and all things west related. But this is beautiful around here too. And the perfect place to be for sunsets every evening and we're enjoying our stay. And I know Rudel is. He's got a little gallop to his step and can't wait to lead me down the road. And the lake is down the hill a ways there, as you can see. And access isn't very good. I mean, there's a couple trails going down. I call them rattlesnake trails because that's what it looks like you will encounter. But that spot where that white van is that you might be able to see right in the middle, it looks nice and secluded. It's all the way down the end of that run. And if they weren't there, that's the location we probably would have ended up taking. But none of these you can complain about because they all have nice shade canopies and big fire pits. Of course, you have to make sure that there's no fire restrictions at the time of your fire. But they have the barbecue stands. There's dumpsters here. There's trash cans here. There's, there's no water at this site right here, but there's other sites that have water available. Plus, the dump station has water available there potable water for, for drinking so that's super nice to see my rudel and we are keeping rudel on a leash because for a couple reasons one it's a recreation area ran by the national parks 
So it's required that he's on a, a leash, but also because this is rattlesnake country. And even though this is in mid-November, it's warm here and rattlesnakes have been spotted. We were talking to our neighbor, they've already seen three in just a matter of a couple days. Um, it's a little cooler at night and in the morning, so they're a little bit slower, but then they move out to the warmer locations like this hot road and soak up the heat during the day. So we're keeping Rudel away from the snakes. And like I was mentioning before, it's a national recreation area and it's ran by the national parks. So that tells me that you cannot fly a drone here, although it's not posted. It's just one of those things that you need to know where you can fly and you can't fly. And for me, that is a do not fly any national parks. And fishing is super popular here. So there's a boat ramp if you're into catching largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, uh, catfish, crappie, trout. Um, it looks like a pretty popular fishing lake. And there's also hunting to be done here if you have the proper paperwork and licensing. All right, let's go. Continue down the road here, Rudel. How you doing? It goes, uh, did you get a sticker in your foot? Oh, you do got a sticker. So Rudel is picking up these little stickers. We used to call them goat heads, but they're a little bit different shape. I'm sure somebody out there knows what their actual name is. But he stops in his tracks, usually lifts up his paw, and I pull them out for him. So not the most dog friendly place I've ever seen, especially this time of year when those stickers are out there. But we're keeping a close eye on them. He seems to be getting by okay. There's a roadrunner. Roadrunners are fascinating creatures. They can fly, but they rarely do because they can run at speeds over 15 miles per hour. They are omnivores, meaning they will eat just about anything they can find on the ground. This includes scorpions, frogs, eggs, insects, and yes, even venomous rattlesnakes. What the roadrunner does is it comes up to the snake, it fluffs up its wings to make it look bigger, and when the snake strikes, the roadrunner jumps out of the way. After enough times, the roadrunner figures out the snake's pattern, and during mid-strike, the roadrunner will grab it behind his head and unfortunately beat its head on the ground until it dies. Ran across the road there. Rudel didn't even notice. Didn't notice, did you, Rudel? Uh, there it is right in front of me, about 30, 40 feet. I'm gonna rank Roadrunner number three on my favorite birds. Um, first and second is going to be the loon. I love loons, the sound they make, um, just how big they are, everything about them. And then bald eagles or any kind of eagle, I'm gonna give number two just because they're so magnificent and powerful. And I get excited every time I see them. And we see them all over the place and it doesn't matter, I still get excited. And then the Roadrunner. Uh, let me know what your favorite birds are because I've got a lot of other ones too, but I'm just naming the top three. So we're walking down towards the boat ramp right now and I am on snake alert right now. I won't let Rudel get too close. I'm trying to kind of stay as far away from the grass as I can because I will not be surprised if I see a snake. It looks like Havelina poop there maybe. Havelina scat, hard to tell. But instead of being bear aware, I'm being snake aware. Now they're out here. One of the guys said he saw one down here by the boat ramp just yesterday. I had no idea there was a little shop here with ice. Carrie knew there was ice. I think I'm gonna surprise her and bring her back a bag of ice because she does not know. This is a giant boat ramp, washing station. I'm gonna surprise Carrie with a bag of ice here. And I got a couple cold drinks too. But she is not gonna have a clue that there is a shop down here that has a little store. So the store does close in just a couple more days on the 12th of November. And then it reopens sometime in March. But I'm taking full advantage of it. I'm gonna put the camera away, hike up the hill back to camp. All right, 
we're coming back up on the van. Yeah, I'd say it's at least a half mile walk, maybe just a little bit further. And you're going down all the way to the lake, so coming back is all uphill. Um, still not bad. But I want to catch Carrie's impression when we surprise her with the ice. And these bags are heavy. I can tell Carrie's working. <laughs> Got you something. You got me something? Soda? What is it? Oh, where did you get ice? <laughs> There's a bait shop down by the boat ramp. There is? Yeah. Oh, sorry, oh, Rudel. Oh, Rudel, you okay? Yeah, hang on. Let me let Rudel in. He's got to say hi. I don't like being okay. Holy. Go on. Get inside. On, there you go. Oh, you guys brought me ice and Pepsi? Yeah. Oh, you're the best boys ever. Yeah, we thought that'd be a surprise considering we had no idea there was a store down there. Oh man, I, I googled <laughs> how far is the store today. <laughs> <laughs> and it did not show the one down there. I bet it didn't. It's a little tiny bait shop. That's awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Hi buddy. Rudel's happy to be back. This was a great spot to get some work done. So I took three or 4,000 pictures at the wedding and it's taken me probably five to 10 hours to go through all the pictures, to edit them, to weed out the ones that I don't want anybody to see. And then every time I do a wedding, my bride gets a, a gift. She gets instant gratification. And this is it right here. It's getting ready to be mailed off. And we are officially done with the wedding. But this was a great stop and a great place to get some work done. There's a spot down here that I want to show you. It's my favorite spot to sit in the evening and watch the sunset. And as you can see, it's very windy, which is very common here at Lake Meredith. Now we are in Texas. It is the 1st of November. A cold front has just come through, but it's starting to warm up again. And I want to tell you a little bit about rattlesnakes. But first, let's go down to this point. I'm going to need my full attention as we go down because I'm going to be on the lookout. This is the spot. The view is spectacular here. And I think it's the best spot to watch sunset. Let me show you why. Isn't that just awesome? I had to move away from the edge. It's entirely too windy. But I wanted to take this chance to talk to you just a few minutes about rattlesnakes. I'll try to keep it short. I am not a snake expert. I am not a huge fan of rattlesnakes or snakes in general. But I feel like I'm most familiar with rattlesnakes because I grew up in rattlesnake country. So us humans, we are warm, warm blooded creatures 
we can regulate our body temperatures. Rattlesnakes are cold-blooded. They cannot regulate their body temperature. They rely on the environment for that. And the reason why I wanted to talk to you about rattlesnakes today is we are in Texas, it's November, a massive cold front has just come through. And the first thing Dave said when we got here is do not walk down to the water, that is a rattlesnake trail. And yesterday I was talking to the neighbor behind us and he tried to walk to the water and almost stepped on two rattlesnakes. And what surprised him the most is they did not alert him that they were there. So when it gets cooler, well, let me back up. Rattlesnakes prefer a temperature of 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when they're at their most active. Humans also prefer that temperature. Now, does that mean rattlesnakes are not out below 65 degrees? Absolutely not. They are, they can be. They, you can find a rattlesnake out if it's above freezing. But when it tends to get a little bit cooler consistently day and night, you will find that the rattlesnakes are warming their bodies. And that's when it's a little bit harder to see them because you'll be walking down the trail, um, they'll be just stretched out, warming themselves. They're not moving very much. They're very lethargic and you don't see them until you step on them. Now, when I'm saying they're not moving much, they're lethargic, you will find out real fast if you put your hand on or if you step on a rattlesnake because you will get bit. So you just got to be extra diligent any time of the year, but especially when it's cooler, just know that they could be there. Check out your surroundings before you step over a rock, before you step over a log, before you sit down, before you put your hands down anywhere. Survey the area really well and just make sure that there are no snakes there. Now, there is an exception to every rule. This is just general information. Like I said, I'm not a snake expert, so if I'm wrong, kindly please put the correct information down in the comments. But, just know that they're out here and be cautious. I've got Rudel's leash around that pole. I'm just trying to keep him out of the stickers because he keeps getting stickers caught in his foot. But I wanted to show you, this is a paid site right here. This is a handful that are not free that where you can get electricity and water at $25 per night. Down by the boat ramp is a bait shop. So you can reserve your site right there at the boat ramp during the regular season after mid-November. Uh, you'll have to do it online. So I don't know if they send somebody up to unlock the electricity box or if they just give you the code. I'm guessing somebody comes up, but they're all locked up. And if so really a fairly reasonable price, I think at $25 if you want water and electricity. And big giant sites, that's why we're gonna say that any size vehicle 
can come to this campground and but you will notice that most of the sites here are free so this is the bathroom slash shower room uh, it's the only one for the campground but it is fairly central in location so you're not too far away the showers are somewhere between warm and hot i thought it was very comfortable definitely my uh, heat level and it's got flush toilets you'll notice i'm wearing shower shoes you will definitely need those here as you can see the entire floor is wet so you got a toilet sink and then the shower now it's not the cleanest i've seen may not be the dirtiest i've seen either it is the push button type pretty good pressure it lasts for one minute it is handicap accessible and the temperature was nice and pretty nice especially you know for a free campground My favorite thing about this campground is that every site has a great view of the lake and it doesn't matter where you go, you're going to get it. That is very true. And there are great sunrises and sunsets here. Yeah. Not to mention the road runners are pretty dang cool. Yeah, which I like. I really like those birds. And when you can get free camping with showers, yeah. how can you turn that down? I was, was going to say, the, having free showers is a big one. A big win. <laughs> Okay, there are several camps, camping spots around the lake, so you'll want to drive around and check out which ones you like best. The two that we checked out is Fritch Fortress. That is not where we're staying today. Uh, that's about five miles away. It's a smaller campground. It has a dump station and water, but the campsites are more for tenters. They're small, they're right off the side of the road, and I would say Big Rig's probably yeah, I'd skip that one. If you got a big vehicle, anything over like 24 feet, forget it. Yeah. Now where we're staying here, what's the name of this one? This is Sanford Yake. And this, any size vehicle can fit in this camp uh, ground. There's plenty big giant spots to pull big rigs in. So it doesn't matter what size vehicle you have. In fact, there are a handful, I don't know, maybe five spots that have level pads big enough for a class a yeah i think are, there's actually nine is there yeah. or a giant fifth wheel they have water they have electric i don't think they have sewer there's no sewer but there is a dump station on the way in they are 25 dollars a night so that's what's confusing when you look at this spot like an eye overlander it looks like it's 25 dollars a night for every spot but it's only for those premium spots that want electric and water. Yeah, the other 25 spots or so are all free. And they have views like what we're looking at right now. Yep. All the other 25 spots have the shade shade covers, yeah. picnic yep. table, and fire rings. Yeah, and like we said earlier, there's water available at the uh, dump station on the way in and hot showers. Yes, and both this campground and Fritch Fortress also has a boat dock or boat ramp. Dock. boat ramp boat rat boat ramp <laughs> so this one here even has a bait store so that's in addition to everything else that's pretty amazing yeah the pay for spots here at sanford yake um on meredith lake <laughs> are 25 dollars a night and they are available year round so if you come here in the summer it's probably going to be very warm if you come here in the winter it's november the daytime highs are low 60s, um, high 60s, low 70s, but the nighttime is pretty chilly. Yeah. As you can see, we have our coat and our hats on. <laughs> um, this is a national recreation area. It's ran by the National Park Service. So that's one reason why you don't see any drones flying around here because it is illegal. Yes, we would have loved to give you a bird's eye view, but um, we just can't do that. Nope. One thing we have to mention is we have been here one other time, a massive storm rolled through and just destroyed 
several tents and shade structures that were up at the other campground. Yeah, yeah, watch your weather forecast because it can get windy here. It just comes up off the lake and hits you fast and hard. Yes, and whatever the wind forecast is, probably add a, a five to 10 more miles per hour. Yeah, yeah. So I would not leave my awning up overnight here. So this is a 14 day stay limit and that's all at one time. I think, what's the yearly cap on that? Was it 30 days? I think it was 30 days. Yeah, yeah. And longer, if you're a hunter, of course, and you have the proper permits and stuff, you can stay up to, I think, 30 days. Yes. Now, Rudel did not care for this site very much. It is not Rudel approved. Nope. <laughs> like Dave just mentioned, there is some hunting in the fall. He does not like gunshots. And more importantly, he does not like that there's little- Stickers. Sharp yep. stickers that stick in his feet, and he just does not even want to get out and walk around here. Yeah, he's at the point where he won't even walk off the road anymore, so he's just tired of getting stickers. <laughs> he gets one in his paw and he just stops I, and holds it up like I help. Feel, I feel bad for him. And they hurt getting them out. They're uh, they're not nice. Oh. Okay, if you are coming across I-40 through Amarillo, this is about 30 miles off the the main yeah. interstate. It is worth it. Oh, I forgot to mention, we're only about five miles away from the nearest town of Bridge. Yes. Which has all basic supplies. If you need anything major, get it before you come in, but it's nice to have resources yes. this close to the campground. Yes. And I must also mention, we have Verizon and T-Mobile. Yeah. We are getting screaming fast uploads and download speeds. Yeah. So we were able to get a lot of work done here. So that is an option yeah, this, too. This location has it all. <laughs> All right, we hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a quick stay for us again. We're gonna continue heading west. Yeah, and we're looking for a place where we can stay a little bit longer, maybe spend a, two weeks in one spot and just kind of really enjoy it. Yeah, we got some scouted out possibilities. So yeah, we we're- got some good ones coming up. We're looking forward to that. <laughs> that's it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next video. <laughs> we should have named this video Rattlesnake on Our Minds. And after all this talk about rattlesnakes, we left without seeing a single snake. If you would like to support our channel, please consider becoming a patron. We also have stickers available in our website store. Thank you for watching.